the glory. I give God the honor and I give God the praise. David said, I will lift my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? All of my help cometh from the Lord. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth. Come on, Pam. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. How many testify about it? People. People from every nation and song, from generation, from generation to generation, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, 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 we worship you for who you are. Lord, you are good, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. I want you to say it again, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy it endureth. endureth forever. One more time, Lord. Lord you are
Your mercy endure forever. He ain't going to run out of mercy. It endures forever. We say welcome to worship here at Mount Calvary AME Church. Are you glad to be in the house? Are you glad to be out there? It's a blessing. And we don't take it for granted. It's a blessing to be in the house just one more time. Here on the second Sunday in August. Who did God promise that they would be here? We're here on the wings of mercy. And I thank God for his grace and his mercy. This, this, this day. I knew my toothbrush from my hair comb this day. This day I knew I could put this foot up and plant it down this day. When I rose this morning, I knew my name was Angie this day. And I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. I've seen people go from dependent to independent over a matter of hours. You used to bathe yourself, wash your face, comb your hair, drive your car. Now somebody has to do all those things. I'm grateful, y'all. I'm grateful. This morning, our invocation will be begun by Reverend Thomasine Adams. Our opening hymn this morning is a good one, y'all. You can make an affirmation this morning that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Hymn number 364, my hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and, and righteousness. I dare, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy leans on Jesus' name. On Christ, on Christ the, the solid rock I stand. All of Darkness veils his lovely face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand his hope his covenant his blood support me in the whelming flood when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come, when trumpet sounds, oh may I 
good morning to the body of Christ. I love that song. Oh, sinking ground. I want to stand on a firm foundation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who did it personally. He died for me. So thank you for this wonderful song of remembrance. Now let us pray this morning. I don't know about you, but I, I need prayer. I had a hard week. And I thank God for giving me the strength to get through. Because if it had not been for him on my side, I would not be standing here this morning. Our Father and our God, we come before you this morning with hearts of thanksgiving, hearts of gratefulness for who you are in our lives, for who you are to and for us. Because you said in your word, you love us with an everlasting love. Your grace on one side and mercy on the other side has sustained us through the week. Your provision and your protection has been upon us. And, all, and we, we need to, from the bottom of our hearts, say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for another Sunday morning where we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come to sacrifice worship today. All that we have, we owe and we give to you in this worship experience. God, worship for us is how you are, much you are worthy in our lives. So we got to show up today, the body of Christ. And we got to do this worship as if this is our last day. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to come into this place and, 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 and just put a throne around us, God, and wrap us, God, with a praise of worship, God, because you who sent your only begotten son died for us. I wouldn't give my son, but you gave your son. So, God, we are so grateful this morning, and we're going to show up, and we're going to show up and, and, and worship you in spirit and in truth waiting for the word of God and this man of God, our Reverend Bobby B. Cox Jr., to deliver this word, because I know he's going to preach this word this morning for deliverance, to set us free. We are no longer captives. We are free in victory in you. Thank you for all who showed up for ministry, thought it not robbery to show up this morning and do what God has called you to do. And for the body of Christ who's sitting here waiting, and even in social media for this day to bless them, because we do not want to leave the same way that we came. So God, thank you, God, for showing up already. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for already having that veil of cloud around us, God. So we're just going to not sit back. We're going to sit up. Or if we have to, stand up. And we're going to worship you with spirit and truth. It is in the blessed name of Jesus that we pray. And our souls say, amen, amen, and hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. I really love the Lord. I really love the
thank you again for this wonderful choir who is singing truth on this morning, truth. So let us please stand for the word of God, the reading of the word of God this morning as you prepare yourself. It's coming from the, um, the book, the prophet of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 28 through 31. This is a message for this time. My God, we need this. Starting at verse 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That's me. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, is that you, will renew their strength. They will soar wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. The word of the God, for the word of the God, for the people of God. I hope you heard this word and be blessed on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're mighty. Hallelujah, Lord, you're mighty. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Woo. You ready? Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Declare, He's mighty. Lord, you're 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 mighty. Lord, 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 you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth? You set your glory above the heavens and the earth. Can y'all help me say, when I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise is high enough to declare how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Declare He's mighty. Lord, you're 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 mighty. Everybody say, Oh Lord, how excellent is Your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I think, when I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise, no praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God. Mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before the mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. 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 
Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Can we give the Lord some praise in the house today? I mean, can we show enough, give God some This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, bless his holy name. It's just good to be in the house. It's just good to be in the house one more time. Anybody here like me just glad to be in the house? Just glad to be in the service? Just one more time. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Glad to be, glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. 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 I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. In the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. I'm bad for those sanctified hands together. Give God some praise in the house today. For I declare that God, He's worthy to be praised. Glad to be in the service. One more time. And man, this morning, we're indeed happy to have all of our guests to share with us in our worship experience here at Mount Calvary. And this morning, if you are a guest with us for the first time, second time, a third time, fourth time, fifth time, we please stand. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Everybody's at home this morning. We praise God. We, we praise God for your presence on this day. Yeah, we praise God for your presence on this day. Day. Amen. Amen. I want to remind you that on Friday at 7 p.m., that uh, uh, Fair Friday, Fair Friday with our young people on the 19th of August at 7 p.m., uh, Brother Jew will be here uh, talking about financial matters and, and not only for our youth, but for our adults as well. We, you are welcome to come and to share. Uh, in this learning experience on Friday, the 19th of August at 7 p.m. for our Fair Friday. Our church school convention for the Baltimore uh, District will convene on the 27th, on the 27th at August, of August via Zoom, and uh, beginning at 9 a.m. So if you have not uh, gone uh, to the site to register uh, to be a part of uh, the church school convention for the Baltimore district. We encourage you to do so. If you do not have the, uh, the website, please call the office and we'd be happy to furnish you uh, the web address so that you may go online and register uh, for uh, the church school convention for the Baltimore district. Also on the 27th is uh, our taste of technology. Uh, in person here at Mount Calvary. So we invite you to share uh, in that experience as well. Uh, you can partake of the uh, church, school, uh, church school convention via Zoom while being in, in person here with the taste of technology. Again, let us remember to keep in our prayers all of our sick, our shut in, our bereaved, and others who may need our prayers, for we certainly believe that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We certainly believe that prayer changes the condition of things. So we, we ask that you will keep everybody lifted up in prayer that the power of God may be manifested in their lives. Amen. Oh, bless his holy name. My brothers and sisters, it is given time. It is given time. It's an opportunity for us to give back a portion of that which God has blessed us with. And, of course, there are several ways that you can give here at Mount Calvary. Uh, you can give in person. Uh, you can give in person today before you leave. You can give today in person. Uh, you can simply mail your gift to Mount Calvary AME Church, P.O. Box 20. 
2016. That's P.O. Box 20416, uh, Townsville, Maryland, 21286. You can go online to our website, mountcalvaryame.org, mountcalvaryame.org, and you can go to our uh, give tab and you can give. You can give on your electronic device uh, through Cash App, uh, dollar sign MC. A M E C M C A M E C, or you can simply call it in uh, to 410-296-9474. Ask for Sister Ursula; she'd be happy to assist you in giving with your credit or debit card. So we ask that you would give your tithes and your offering as God has blessed, as God has prospered you to give. Because I declare that you can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. The more that you give to him, the more he gives to you. So just keep on giving because it's really true that you can't be God given uh, no matter how you try. Uh, shall we pray and thank God for the gifts uh, that, that the gifts that have been received today through our tithes and our offering? All things come of thee. worthy all day long to be praised.
for salvation. He's not weak, but he's a strong deliverer. Deliverer. In him, in him, in him will I always Jesus, Jesus, Mary's baby, Jesus, my lily in the valley, Jesus, my bright and morning star, Jesus, my help on the journey, Jesus, 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 my salvation, Jesus. God, our Father, how grateful we are to you once again for this blessed opportunity that we have to worship you today in spirit and in truth. Now, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will speak through these lips of clay that someone will be helped here on this day. We pray, God, that you will Continue to manifest yourself in such a way that lives will be changed, souls will be saved, fire will be rekindled. God, we love you. And how we do praise you and thank you for being a great God. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. This morning, I want to call your attention once again to that passage of scripture that was read earlier in your hearing. And that passage simply says in Isaiah 40, verses 28 through 31. Can I get these monitors turned down in the pulpit just a little bit? Amen. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. The New King James Version of the Bible has these words recorded in Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, 
the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For a few minutes this morning, I simply want to tag this text for preaching the realness of God. The realness of God. Throughout the centuries, theologians have talked about the realness of God. John Calvin said, it is an innate knowledge. Frederick Slymarker said, it is a sense of absolute dependency. Thomas Aquinas said, the realness of God can be proven uh, through the five philosophical arguments that he puts forth in his writing. And for those of us who embrace and believe in the God of the Judeo-Christian experience can attest that God is real and he avails and presents himself in situations that appear to be impossible. However, the realness of God seems to be evading our culture today. Uh, that is why even as we live and as we breathe, the existence of God is being doubted. The character of God is being challenged. The authority of God is being denied. The integrity of God is being questioned. The greatness of God is being overlooked. And the word of God is being denounced. But can I tell you this morning, regardless of culture, the realness of God is fact and not fiction. I just need to remind you today, while you were yet a sinner, when you had made a conscious decision to negate and renounce the intimate company of God, when you were stuck in your stuff, uh, when you didn't have enough sense to love him, but he had enough strength to love you, because the Bible says, for God so loved the world, uh, that he gave his only begotten son. His son came down uh, through 40 and two generations to die on the cross on a hill called Calvary just for your sins. So it is because of the realness of God that you are alive today. And no wonder when I think about the goodness of God, how he touched me this morning with a fingertip of love, how he woke me up on due time, how I was closed in my right mind and had a reasonable portion of my health and my strength. Yeah, when I think about the goodness of God to me and, and all that God has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. My soul cries out, yes, God is real. Ah, today's text is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. And this rich and complex text exhibits God's glorious splendor and power as creator and the giver of life. At the time of the text, Israel, God's chosen people, they are living in exile. They have perceived that they have been abandoned and forgotten by God. Uh, therefore, God tells the prophet Isaiah to comfort his people. So Isaiah comforts God's people uh, by putting forth uh, his argument about the realness of God in this uh, 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 liturgical or uh, lyrical poem in Isaiah 40, it is designed to one refute the charges of God's unfaithfulness. 
Two, to affirm the realness of God. And three, to revive hope for Israel in its dismay. The first section of this poem begins in verse 21 with four rhetorical questions. These rhetorical questions serve to set up the answers in verses 22 and 23 with a series of five verbs. These verbal forms report actions that are characteristic of God's ongoing acts in time. For the text says, God at all time, that God at all time, that God sits, that God stretches, that God spreads, that God brings, and that God makes. Uh, then for a third time, the general pattern of question and answer is re reiterated in verses 27 through 31, which brings us to the heart of today's subject matter, the realness of God. For Isaiah asks, have you not known, uh, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is wearied, his understanding is, in, is unsearchable. In other words, Isaiah seems to be saying, don't you know, haven't you heard that, that the God, that God is a God for all times, even unto everlasting. For God is without beginning of days and end of life. He was from, the, from eternity and he will be to eternity. There is no De uh, deficiency or decay in God, he has unfound wisdom for the profundity of his knowledge is unsearchable. Isaiah goes on to say God gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be wearied and young men shall utterly fall down. The realness of God, so say Isaiah, is that while God is non-fainting, he ministers to fainting creation. While God does not get wearied, he gives life to wearied creatures. The realness of God is that he gives power to the faint. And brothers and sisters, that simply means that when you feel like giving up, he will give you power. When you don't want to go on, he will give you power. When the storms of life rage, he will give you power. When burdens press you down, he will give you power. When trauma assails on every side, he will give you power. When you become weak, weary, and worn, he will give you power. He gives power to the faint. God is God, and he's a uh, God all by himself, and, and he's all powerful. He is an omnipotent God. He, he, there is no limit to his ability to meet your need. There is no limit to his deliverance and his provision for whatever you have need of in your life. Because God never gets tired. God never grows weak. And somebody uh, needs to know today that God knows uh, how to give you power to overcome. Yeah, he will take your weakness, he will take your failure, your doubt and your fears and turn them into miracles of deliverance. He gives power to the faint. Is there anybody here who knows that he gives power to the faint? Have you ever experienced faint. I mean, when you feel like giving up, when you don't feel like going on, when you feel like throwing in a towel, but some way, somehow, God gives you power. God gives you power. He gives power to the faint. And then Isaiah says to the, to the Israelites, I know you are I know you are oppressed by your captors and depressed by your exile condition. I know you feel like you have been abandoned and forgotten by God. I, I know you think that uh, God isn't real, but, 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 but they that wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. They, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and, and not be weary. They shall walk and not 
faith. Uh, uh, sometimes you just got to wait. Uh, and just because you have to sometimes wait uh, on the Lord does not mean that God ain't real. Uh, it does not mean that God has abandoned you, that God has forgotten about you. Sometimes you have to wait to get uh, get the, get, get, get renewed strength. Uh, uh, sometimes you have to wait to get refreshed. Uh, uh, somebody knows about renewed strength. Uh, uh, sometimes you have to go through the fire while still trusting God to bring you through. Uh, uh, sometimes you had to believe in the impossible. Sometimes you had to look for unseen answers. Uh, sometimes you had to hope in times of hopelessness. Uh, but you waited and your strength was renewed. Uh, sometimes you had to deal with stressful family issues. Uh, you had to deal with troubling health issues. Uh, you had to deal with uncertain emotion matters, emotional matters. Uh, you had to deal with spiritual warfare, but you waited, uh, and you, because you waited, uh, your physical strength, uh, your mental strength, uh, your emotional strength, uh, your spiritual strength, uh, God renewed your strength. Uh, and that's what Isaiah was saying, but there uh, <laughs> that wait upon the Lord uh, shall uh, renew their strength. But I declare you got to know that he's real. And to know that God is real, you must experience God. Yeah, to know that God is real, you got to experience God. Uh, 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 don't you know, uh, have you heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, uh, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, that uh, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who, who have no, no might. He increases their strength. Uh, ah, my brothers and my sisters, I, I'm fascinated by the ways we uh, conceive and, 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 and talk about God. Uh, yeah, at times we speak of God in broad, absolute categories, such as God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. The acknowledgement of these infinite qualities of God and these descriptions encompass both our broad and our narrow understanding of them. I mean, omniscient, that, that, that God knows everything. And, 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 and so we really don't know what everything is, but everything is everything. Uh, God has all power, and we don't know what all power is. We just know that God has all power. God is um, omnipresent, that, that God is, is everywhere at the same time. Somebody said even God bumps into himself going to where he's already is. These terms also let us know that God's knowledge and wisdom accomplish not only things of the universe out there, but, they, but, but that God also wants us to know uh, him in a very intimate way. God's power is not just about abstract power, but he wants to impact our lives with his, his power. That's why Isaiah said that he gives power to the faint. But in order to receive the power, you must experience God. You, God must be experienced. Yeah, 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 yeah. we come to, and, and in order for us to experience God, uh, we have to understand how we come to know God. We come to know God on three distinct levels. Our first encounter with God is a vicarious one. Uh, that is, we, this experience uh, suggests that we learn about God through someone else's experience. Uh, yeah, yeah, mama said that God is water in dry places. Daddy said that God is bread in the starving land. Uh, uh, grandma said that, that, that God is a walking cane in old age. Uh, granddaddy said that God is a leaning post. Uh, while these declarations represent reality, they are someone else's and not yours. Uh, and then secondly, you learn about God academically. That is through the study, reflection, and meditation. This is an intellectual approach to God. 
We do this through such channels as church schools, Bible study, uh, conventions, conferences, seminars, seminary. This is needed and necessary, but it is not enough to really experience the realness of God. And then third, at some point, your understanding of God must move beyond the vicarious and the academic to the practical and the real. I say this because God does not become real until he become practical in our lives. Uh, our practical means God shows up and God delivers you from crisis, from calamities. From circumstances, from, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the time to catch up. Uh, some situations, some sickness, some problems, some predicaments, some abuse, some anxiety, uh, some guilt, some drugs, some jealousy, lying, anger, insecurity, negativity, negative attitude, pessimistic mindset. Until God becomes practical to you, uh, you will never experience it. Know that God is real. Yeah, in order for you to know the realness of God, you got to experience him for yourself. You, uh, you got to come to the understanding that God is more than a theor uh, theor theoretical assumption or a theological speculation. Uh, to know the realness of God, you got to have an encounter with God. Uh, you got to experience God for yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't care how you attempt to perceive him, depict him, or betray him. Uh, when you experience him for yourself, uh, uh, you, will, you will come to know him uh, like you never have known him before. Uh, uh, yeah, you will come to know him that he is, uh, uh, he is Jehovah the Lord. Uh, he is El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. Uh, he is Jehovah Salom, uh, the Lord of your peace. Uh, he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Uh, he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord he, who heals. Uh, he's everything that you need him to be, uh, but you've got to experience him for yourself. Uh, and when you experience God, for yourself. Uh, you can say he's real. Uh, he's real. Uh, he's real uh, because he's my mortgage payer. Uh, he's my car no payer. Uh, he's my way out of no way. Uh, he's my bridge over troubled waters. Uh, he's my ladder uh, to high mountains. Uh, but you got to experience him uh, for yourself. Uh, so that you will know that he can be anything that you want him to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, that's why, that's why when Moses, uh, when Moses was on the bite side of the mountain uh, and God spoke to Moses and told him to pull off his shoes and, and go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And Moses said, who is it that I must tell Pharaoh that sent me? And God simply said, tell them that I am who I am. And when you have experienced him, he can be. I am whoever you want him to be in your life. <sighs> to know God is real, you must not only experience God, but you must know that God is always present. Verse 31 simply says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mine up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Although the Israelites felt abandoned and forgotten by God while they were in their exile condition, Isaiah reminded them that God had not abandoned them, that God had not forgotten about them, but God was, was and has always been present with them in their problematic predicament. But just because they had to wait on God to move on their behalf did not mean, did not mean that God was not present with them. Uh, well, when you know God is real, you know that God is always present. All you got to do is just wait on the Lord. God may seem distant, but he's not absent. He is the one who can help you to focus and find meaning to life. 
He is the one who cares for you when nobody else cares about you. <laughs> because he's always uh, everywhere present. And I believe that's why the psalmist wrote, Oh Lord, you know my sitting down and my rising up. Uh, you understand my faults, you comprehend my path. And you know my lying down. Uh, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Uh, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell uh, in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. <laughs> but God is always with you. Uh, wherever you are, God is always there by your side. I mean, there's never a time when you are in a predicament uh, that God is not in that same situation with you. Uh, you may not see God. Uh, you may not feel God. Uh, you may not hear God. Uh, but you got to know that God is always present uh, because your faith is not based on what you can see. Uh, because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, so you don't have to see him. Uh, to know that he's there all you got to do is just know that if God said it uh, then that is enough uh, uh, therefore when you have experienced him uh, when you know that God is real uh, uh, when you know that God is always present uh, all you got to do is just wait on him uh, because they that wait upon the Lord uh, uh, shall renew their strength uh, I don't know about you today uh, but I've experience God for myself. Uh, I know that he is always present uh, and I know that he is real. Uh, I, I tried him for myself. Uh, I experienced him for myself uh, and I know too much about him uh, and you can't make me doubt him. Uh, uh, you can't make me doubt that he's not real. Uh, uh, is there anybody here uh, that shown up knows that he's real? Uh, all you got to do it just wait on him and he shall he shall renew your strength and the bible says that you will mount up I don't know if you ever had an opportunity to see an eagle in person. If you ever had the opportunity to see one fly. But an eagle is not just like any other bird. I mean, an eagle just can't just up and fly. But an eagle has to mount up. Yes, he has to mount up. And that's what God is saying. That in that renewal process. But then. They that wait upon the Lord uh, uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, and when your strength is renewed, uh, you just can't pop up. Uh, you got the mind up. Uh, is there anybody in this house uh, that been to the point uh, where your spirit was renewed uh, and you mounted up uh, with wings as eagles? Uh, yeah. And you was able uh, to run and not be weary, you were able uh, to walk and not faint, uh, and your testimony uh, has simply become uh, that God is real, uh, and I don't know uh, about you this morning, uh, but there are some things uh, that I may not know. Uh, there are some places uh, that I can't go, uh, but I'm sure uh, of this one thing, uh, that God is real, uh, for I can feel him uh, uh, deep within. Uh, the hymn now just said, uh, some folk may doubt, uh, uh, some folk may scorn. Uh, all can desert uh, and leave me alone. Uh, but as for my part, uh, I take God uh, because God is real uh, and I can feel him uh, uh, in my heart. Uh, Come on and testify with me. Yes, that God is real in my soul. For he has watched and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. That God is real. I can feel him 
in my soul. Uh, yes. Yes. He's real. He's real. He's real. <laughs> Haven't you heard? Don't you know? The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint, nor does he become weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Even the young people shall faint. Young men and women shall utterly fall. But they, they wait upon the Lord. That's, 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 that's your testimony right there. They, they that wait upon the Lord, that's your testimony. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their, their strength. Oh, that's, 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 that's the testimony right there. Ah. That he's real. That he's real. That he's real. I, as I often say that. I know that he's real in my heart. I know that. I know that. I know that. I know that. I was told when I was born. I was told where I was born. But I don't know any day, I, I don't know. I was told that. I believe it because I don't believe my parents would lie to me. And after almost 60 years, I don't, continue, I don't think they would continue to tell me the same lie. But I don't know that. But I do know that the third Sunday in June, in 1973, in a little block church Gordon. in Gordon, Alabama, that I experienced God for myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that I do know. And since that day, I know I haven't been perfect. Yes, I've done some wrong. But that did not negate the fact that I know him and that he knows me. But I, I, I experienced God for myself. My parents, they, they brought me up in a Christian home. They carried me to churches every Sunday. So much so that I knew the prayers that the old saints were going to pray <laughs> because every Sunday was the same prayer. They prayed the same prayer, but they prayed the prayer with such power. That folk shouted off prayers. They were so powerful that folk got saved off of the same prayer. Because in that little community that I came up in, all they had was faith. There was, we didn't have white collar workers in my community. We didn't have blue collar workers in my community. We had unskilled laborers. 
but they believed in God. Yeah, they did. They knew God was real. They, I don't know how they were able to do it. How they were able to make ends meet. How, 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 how they were making less than $50 a month and had 13 children in a three-bedroom house. And nobody was naked or hungry because they had a lot of faith. They knew God was real. <laughs> and here we are with one child <laughs> in a four bedroom house. And can't afford life. They knew God was real. They knew the realness of God. So I knew all of that. I saw all of that. But then nothing happened until I decided to open up my heart. To that Sunday morning when I decided to give Christ my life. And it changed me. He changed me. I, I, I understood what they, they were saying. I looked at my hands. Hands, they looked new. I looked at my feet, and my feet did too, and joy bells began to ring in my heart. It wasn't a, a physical transformation. But it was a spiritual transformation. But simply said that what these hands have, what they have been doing, they ain't going to do no more. Where these feet have been going, they ain't going no more. What my heart has been thinking and conceiving, and it, 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 there's a change. All I'm trying to tell you this morning is that he's real. Have you not known? Have you not heard that the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not faint, neither is he weary. He's real. He's real. If you don't know him today, you can get to know him just like I got to know him back in 1973. You can get to know him today in 2022 for yourself. On this the second Sunday in August. You can give him your life today. Wherever you are. You don't have to be in the church to get saved. You can get saved wherever you are. You can get saved right there in your living room. You can get saved right there in your bedroom. You can get saved right there in your den. You can get saved right down the highway. You can get saved on your job. You can get saved in, in, that, in that penal system. You can get saved just where you are. Because nothing can keep God from coming from where you are. Because in reality, he's already there. Already there. Yeah. This morning, if you want to become a member of Mount Calvary, I would love to be your pastor. The members of Mount Calvary, they will love on you, help you grow, become everything that God has designed and destined you to be. This morning, you simply need to re uh, rededicate your life to the Lord. You won't need to rededicate your life to the Lord because at some point in your life, you fell out with God, you fell out with church. But now you want to come back to God, you want to come back to church. Right. And I declare that God's arms are open wide, the church's arms are open wide as well to receive you back into the family because God is married to the bike slider. Uh, he did not move, you moved. But he's welcoming you back today with open arms. <clears throat> there are some things. There are some things. That I may not know. I may not know. There are some places. There are some places. That I. 
that I can't go, can't go. but I am sure but I am sure of this one thing of this one thing that God that God is real, is real. and oh, I can feel him him be my soul oh yes God come on Let's testify together. Yes, God. Real in my soul. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. And and made me whole. His love, His love for me, is just. Yes, God. Yes, God is real. For I can feel Him in my soul. Some folk may scorn. Some folk may die. Some folk may scorn. All can deserve. All can deserve. The door is open. And leave. The invitation is extended to the But as for me, I'll, I'll take God's word, for God is real, and I can feel him in, him in my heart. Last time, let's testify oh, together. Yes, God. Yes. the Lord and bless the Lord as you remain on your feet. It's been a great day. It's been a good day. It's been a mighty, mighty good day. And we praise God for it and we praise God for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now to him who's able to keep you from fall. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with his sinly joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. And the people of God said together,
Thank you for engaging in the ministry of giving. You can go to our website and click the Give tag. You can call the church office and give your gift with your debit or credit card. You can mail your gift to the church. You can bring your gift to the church during office hours, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4 p.m. You can give through Cash App on your smart device. Thank you for joining our virtual worship experience and may God continue to bless and keep you. Until the next Lord's Day, be well and be safe.